Here I've got a set of three Narex mortise chisels. These Narex chisels are great for getting started with hand cut mortising because they're very affordable to get into your shop. Uh, you can buy them individually or you can buy them in sets. Here I've got a set of a 6mm, an 8mm and a 10mm which is essentially going from quarter inch up to about 3 eighths of an inch. Now taking a close up view uh, of the chisels, uh, very typical mortise chisel. The handle is a little bit beefy uh, for registering in your hand. Uh, and it's a little bit elongated to help you register um, the chisel when you're cutting your mortises. The um, chisel itself tapers slightly along its uh, length from heel to toe to help with the levering action. And they come ground from the factory, but of course you'll want to do some final honing once you get them into your shop. Now I've made a few hand cut mortises, but not nearly as many as my buddy Shannon Rogers. Now if you don't know Shannon, he runs the Hand Tool School, which is a phenomenal resource uh, all about hand tools and practicing and learning the techniques of hand tools all online. So definitely check that out. Now I've asked Shannon to help us out today by checking out these chisels and giving his overview of what he thinks about these chisels. So Shannon, take it away brother. Thanks Morton. Hi guys, I'm Shannon Rogers. I'm the host of the Renaissance Woodworker podcast and blog and the founder of the Hand Tool School. Regardless of how you know me, you know that I like hand tools. And for that matter, who doesn't like taking a chisel and pounding on it with all you've got with a big mallet? And that is the domain of the mortise chisel. Mortising chisels should be very beefy, stout chisels. They should have a very thick blade designed to really take a beating with a big mallet. So I was really excited to get an opportunity to play with these Narex chisels because I get questions all the time about them. I am a big fan of the traditional English pattern mortising chisel. Big, big, beefy blade and a big handle, usually of an oblong shape, so it really registers well in the hand. So when I got a hold of this Narex chisel, which is a modern manufactured chisel, I was really pleasantly surprised. First and foremost, it's really big. The handle is really big. This is a solid beach handle and it's got the, the ring at the top to prevent the handle splitting as you bang on it with the mallet. Moreover, it has the edges eased. These flat edges register the chisel. If you hold it so that the blade is running side to side, it, it doesn't fit in your hand right. If you hold it with the blade in the proper direction, the flattened sides kind of mold to your hand and it allows you to hold the chisel perfectly aligned with the work. They come ground with a 25 degree primary bevel, which I really, really like. A lot of mortising chisels have a much steeper bevel angle on them, which is great for edge life when you pound on these, but the lower 25 degree angle means that you can grind a secondary bevel an eighth to maybe a quarter of an inch wide that's much, much steeper, like 35 degrees. The lower 25 degree bevel angle means that it gets the blade out of the way of the chips. So when you're in your mortise and digging around and pulling out chips, that steeper, or excuse me, lower angle really helps as a pathway to clear some of those chips out. The thing I like most about these is something that you really only find in vintage style mortising chisels. And that's the actual shape of the blade. The cutting edge is a little bit wider than the rest of the blade. In other words, the blade actually tapers as it moves up toward the handle. So I wanna bring you down to a mortise and I wanna explain that tapered angle on the, the blade a little bit better and why it's really helpful. When I'm ready to chop with these, again, the flat sided edge really allows me to quickly line up the chisel blade with the line of the mortise. It allows me to align my body behind it as well. Now, as I begin to chop down in, I'll sink it until the pitch changes when you can tell you're at the bottom of the mortise. Now, a typical mortise chisel with a straight up and down edge would really be jammed in this at this point. And this is pretty firmly in the, the mortise here. But because I've got the slight taper, there's just a little bit of a relief space between the sides of the mortise and the sides of the chisel. So all I have to do is kind of wiggle it back and wiggle it forward and it comes free. That tapered edge gives you just enough space to break it free and pull it out. Otherwise, the straight sided chisel would be firmly stuck in there with a friction against the walls and you end up really having to pound on it to get it out. That little bit of a taper goes a really long way in ensuring <laughs> that 
not only that you can get your mortising chisel out, but that you don't damage your workpiece in the process. Mortising by hand may seem like an awful lot of work, but it doesn't have to be hard. With a proper mortise chisel that can help you stay aligned with your work and will let go of the work when you're ready to pull the chisel out, it really can be a snap. I've cut probably a dozen of these mortises using this one chisel and testing it out, and I really couldn't be happy with how it performed. So thanks for stopping by, guys. Thanks for listening. Back to you, Morton. Thanks, Shannon. Wow, that was a great explanation on the use of these chisels. Obviously, they compare uh, pretty well, as Shannon found, to traditional mortising chisels, but it's a brand new manufactured chisel that's affordable and easy to get into your shop. So definitely check out Shannon Rogers and the Hand Tool School, and if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us.